When you're looking for a job as an ASDET, QA Automation Engineer, or a Software Engineer in test, you will very likely get technical questions or algorithm challenges. And one of our students recently did go through an interview and share this particular question that he had at the last round of his interview before he got a job offer with a CTO of the company. And I will show you how to answer it in two ways. As the during QA Automation Engineer and as a senior QA Automation Engineer, as that, as that, or whatever you want to call yourself. So I would highly recommend you guys to stick until the end of the video so you could see how will the junior or senior automation engineer solve this problem. But before we get into it, let me quickly remind you who is this guy who is pretending to be really smart. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I'm the founder of the Codenify Bootcamp. I've been in the world of QA and as that for about a decade. I've been teaching people for about six years and lately I've been just helping people like you to become a QA engineer or an as that or simply financially happy tech person. And now, hit that big fat thumb up button below as this would be your 100k job offer button. Subscribe to our YouTube, Instagram and the Telegram communities, links to which you can find right below this video. And let's get started. So the question itself was kind of simple. You have an array of random numbers and you have to get the smallest and the largest numbers of this array. And the guy was like, um, you know what? There are two ways to solve this problem. One of them is to, by the way, stop the video right here, pause it for a second, and let me know which ways do you know of solving this problem. The guy was like, ah, oh, probably there are two ways. One would be to sort that array and then just pick the first and the last item. And the second way would be just loop through, compare them and get the smallest one and the largest one. And the CDO was like, hmm, that sounds about right. But which way would you choose as a QA automation engineer or a senior QA automation engineer? And the guy was like, oh, well, probably sort, because that would be easier. It just... Uh, one line of code to sort it and then another line of code to get the smallest number and another line of code to get the largest number or to get a first and a last one. Now let's get directly into actual solutions so I could show you how the juniors and the seniors would solve this problem on my screen. First of all let's create an array. So const let's say numbers equals to an array with the random numbers that I'm going to put right here. Bam, 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 bam. Awesome. Now we're gonna loop through and find, I mean, generally speaking, we're gonna find the smallest and the largest numbers. And imagine that this is a 1 million line, 1 million values array. We do can see now that a 5 is the smallest and 453 is the largest, but imagine you don't know those digits. Uh, so, how do we do that? First of all, we can simply sort it. So, sort an array. And this will be const sorted array equals to numbers dot sort. And then we are going to, uh, we're going to sort it utilizing the sort height order function. And we're gonna say a minus b to, in order to sort it in an ascending order. So now, after we sort it, let's make sure that we can actually see it being sorted. And then we're gonna find the first solution for this problem. So, sorted array, console log, let's run it, test.js. Perfect. So, 5, five, five is the smallest, and 453 is the largest. Awesome. That means we can find the smallest number. So, const smallest equals to sorted array square bracket zero. This will give us this first value of this array, which would be five. And then the largest is going to be sorted array. And how do we get the last one? Well, in order to get a last one, we have to get a length of this array. So instead of passing index, we're gonna say sorted array dot length minus one because we do start counting from zero and uh, generally speaking when we are talking about length so it will be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten but this is an index and indexes start from uh, from zero 
So length starts from one and the index starts from zero, which means that we're gonna, this is going to be index number nine. So that's why we have to say 10 minus one will be nine. So now we can actually, and we should create a function and function will be named find largest and smallest. And then we're gonna pass an array. We're gonna move all of this code upstairs uh, by holding option and pressing uh, arrow up. And then we're gonna return an object with a smallest and a largest numbers. So after we do this, we're gonna run our code and we did not get any result because we did not run, we did not execute that function. We did create it, but we didn't execute it. So let's, let's pass an array of numbers. And by the way, we have to utilize our parameter. There we go. Now it should all work like magic. And we didn't console log it. Console.log. Now it should work. I mean, we should see an output. It did work before. Smallest five, largest 453. Awesome, this is a first solution and I'm going to comment it out. And by the way, guys, we have recently introduced almost a free week of education with Codemify. So every single one of you could try yourself as the QA engineer in a US-based startup. So we gave people theory, we gave them skills, knowledge, and mainly experience. They did try the course themselves. We had almost 300 people in the course and a lot of them have already signed up and are going through the full course right now because they loved it. So if you're interested, if you want to give yourself a shot without paying hundreds or thousands of dollars, simply sign up by following the link right below this video. I'll see you on the inside. And the second solution would be to actually loop through manually. And by manually, I mean we have to loop through each of the numbers so we can use for each loop. So for each, instead of using sort. And at the end of this video, I will tell you why we should one or the other one. And you guys can leave a comment below and tell me why do you think we should use sort or for each and which one is better. So we're gonna say const, no, we're gonna use let smallest equals to, it's going to be a first value of an array. And I will explain to you in a second why. We are not simply putting zero. And the second one is going to be largest equals to the same thing. And now we're gonna loop through. Well, we should not use for each because we are using, we're starting from the second value, not from the first one. So let's just use simply use for loop instead. Okay. We're going to loop through and we're going to use our array. We're going to loop through our array and then we're going to check if our array square brackets i, which means which is the first value of an array, if this is smaller than the first value, which is smallest, then we're going to reassign smallest to this particular value. And just for example, guys, first loop, our first value is going to be 24. So instead of here, we're gonna have 24. Um, and that's the problem. We should start from a second loop. Uh, so uh, from a second number. So in the first loop, array i is going to be five. And we're gonna compare it with smallest, which is first value in array, which is 24. So we're checking if five is smaller than 24. It definitely is. So we're going to take five and reassign the smallest, which was 24 before, with a number five. So that's how we're going to find the smallest and reassign it. And the largest is going to be exactly the same thing with only one difference. It is going to be the largest. So let's do this. Now let's return our return our object, which we did right here. And we're gonna get exactly the same result, guys, right now. And you should see it right here. Perfect. Now, let me explain to you why is one better than the other one. So the difference between junior and the senior engineers is 
Junior will solve it anyhow. We'll find the easiest way for that person to solve it. And this will probably be the easiest way for the junior engineer if you understand how sort works. Because you don't have to add all of this logic. It's simply already added by default to sort method or higher order function. But how many loops does sort do? Not one, quite a few. So that's exactly why here we're going to make multiple loops. And imagine that this is 1 million values of array. This will take an insane amount of time. I mean, much larger chunk of time compared to if we simply loop only once. This solution will run only once. We loop only once over 1 million numbers. And we will not have to loop multiple times in a way we would with sort. That's why this is a much better solution to solve this problem. And that's exactly why whenever you go for interview, you should give them this option and explain it to the person. If you're still watching it right now, that means you're very persistent and you want to change your life. And I've decided to give you something. So if you are that person who is looking for a job and cannot find it for some reason, that's why you're trying to improve your skills, leave a message right below this video, I mean a comment, with your email address and a name, and I will give you a completely free week of education with the Cognify. So you could get actual experience in a US-based startup with me, if you are interested. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.